climate change is a reality that has implications on our way of life, the future of humanity. Nyumba lizama kumai kule. Tena mimi nilikuwa mwenye kushona nguo, mashini yangu yote, kila kitu yangu yote lizama kumai. Miko tumie ile tu. Humanity is faced with critical choices. Panic, remain passive or take decisive action to address challenges. The people of Africa and people everywhere need action to respond to deadly climate extremes. First, we need far greater climate ambition, with countries hitting fast forward and massively accelerating action to limit temperature rises and impacts. Uganda and the global community have pathways available to confront climate change. Energy transition is frequently indicated as a key solution. This transition compels assessment of the energy we utilize in daily life, how we produce, consume and sustain ourselves. Our what kind of energies are we using to go about these activities? It's that some of these energies come from non-renewable sources and that some of these non-renewable sources then have a serious effect. There is an urgent call, particularly from countries in the global north, for a swift transition away from fossil fuels to mitigate its hazardous impacts. This demand is often perceived as unjust by nations in the global south, which contributes only about 3% to global warming. You realize we're talking to a region in East Africa that produces less than 0.2% greenhouse gas emission. Less than 0.2% in East Africa. How would you tell this region to decarbonize? It's like telling the fat kid in class to lose, uh, the skinny kid in class to lose weight while the fat kids keep eating. This accelerated push for transition places Uganda, a newcomer in the oil and gas sector, between a rock and a hard place. If the brother countries work together, there is then the oil in Congo and South Sudan. This pipeline could turn out to be a very important project that may serve the region, not only in the short term, but also in the medium, if not the long term. Apart from socioeconomic benefits, the project will also stimulate trade, investment, as well as unlocking the East Africa's oil potential, thus attracting more investors. And I've been telling everybody that Africa is not poor. We just lack some finances, but we are not poor. Uganda is not poor, and Uganda is open to friends. So the financing institutions must hear this as they pull, as banks plan to pull out because of the narrative of fossil fuel, we are watching as Africa. We are opening doors. Since the discovery of commercially viable oil in 2006 and the subsequent launch of Uganda's oil project, the initiative has undergone thorough environmental and social impact assessments all of which has affirmed its compliance with the necessary standards. We've been able to benchmark and we've been able to make corrections from the mistakes that other countries have done. So for us, we are happy, we are moving slowly, but we shall arrive without casualties. Moreover, the Ugandan government has clear plans for energy transition. We will optimize and use all our renewable energy resources. By adding Karuma to the national grid, we see our clean energy electricity increasing to 93% of our energy mix. So that speaks again to greening. Greening, net zero, commitment by the government of Uganda, to ensure that we are achieving our nationally determined contributions as committed at COP28, but also under the UNFCC protocols. So we are on track. The energy transition agenda charts a course toward sustainable energy sources while ensuring broad stakeholder participation in this journey.
Join us tomorrow for the second part of this comprehensive energy transition feature. Dennis Igor for UBC News, 